This is the most important video for surplus funds. Watch your close rate skyrocket after this video is done. Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to my page, Money Making Juggernaut. I'm your host, Eric Richardson. Exactly like the intro said, this is going to be the most important video to kickstart your surplus funds business. I am going to discuss the three ways that we can actually make calls in this business. All right, so everybody should not be calling the exact same way. I'm going to give you three ways that you can pick from that best fits your personality so that you can close deals. All right, so before we get into that, make sure you guys go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe button. As you know, I'm coming out with content for you guys so that you can dominate in this industry. All right, guys, without further ado, we are gonna go ahead and start with the first method. This is going to be a direct approach, okay? So when it comes to sales, guys, look, I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but I've been in sales for a long time. I've Last year, I did over six million in sales. This is just in my in insurance and annuity business. Now, of course, when it comes to closing sales and deals in the asset recovery space, my company, we're doing hundreds of thousands every single year. So you guys are learning from somebody who has great sales tactics, okay? And one thing that I've learned over these years, um, not only from my experience, but learning from others who have you know, years and years of sales and the ability to close is when you're on the phone with somebody, having the direct approach literally cuts out all of the nonsense, okay? So majority of the time, people just to kind of build rapport and get somebody comfortable, they're gonna start the phone conversation with, you know, a lot of what I like to call dead information. Oh, hey, how's your, how's your day going? Asking them about kids, things like that. Look, if you do not know them on a personal level, I honestly don't believe you should be asking them, hey, how's the kids going? Or you, sh you definitely shouldn't be initially cold calling somebody acting as if you already know them. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys get these calls all the time, a telemarketer or even a scam or anything like that, they call you and then they're just like, hey, like for example for me, hey, Eric, how's it going? And I'm like, who is this? Like, and now I'm getting mad because you're acting like I know you, you're acting like I'm your friend and I have no idea who you are and why you're calling me. So we are gonna eliminate that, all right? With the direct approach, we are gonna get straight to it. We're not gonna waste any time, all right? So the, here is the format for the direct approach, all right? So in the beginning, all right? So every single call scenario that I'm gonna give you guys is gonna have what I like to refer to as a call flow, all right? So we have our intro, okay? Your intro, you're gonna state who you are and what company you are representing, okay? So even if it is your company, you are still representing that company. If you are partnering and you're representing another company, you're representing that company, all right? You're gonna state your name, you're gonna state what company you're working with, and then you're gonna let them know, look, I'm not trying to take too much of your time, I'm actually calling in regards to the property at boom, all right? So now they know who you are, and they kind of know the reason why you're calling, all right? Another thing that we wanna do is we want to verify that this is the correct person, all right? So in our intro, like I said, we're gonna say, hello, this is, let's say for example, I'm Eric with Asset Recovery Firm. All right, we're gonna call somebody. For starters, we're gonna say, hello, is this their first name? Let's say for example, I'm calling somebody named John. Hello, is this John? John is gonna say yes, all right? The reason why we only want to use a first name is because it's a little bit more approachable, all right? If you use a first and last name, somebody's gonna have their guard up, all right? So if we say, hi, is this John Smith? Somebody's gonna be like, who is this? Like, why are you calling me? What's going on? You're using my entire governmental name. I know if somebody says, hi, is this Eric Richardson? I'm gonna be like, depends with like, what's going on? Am I in trouble? We don't want to give them another barrier, all right? Because when you're doing a cold call, somebody already has their guard up, okay? So we're gonna say, hello, is this John? They're gonna say yes. You're gonna say, hi, my name is Eric. I'm an asset recovery firm. I don't wanna take too much of your time. I'm actually calling about the property over at 1234 Main Street. Is this the correct individual? Are you the John over at that address? They're gonna say, yes, I used to own that property. What's going on? All right, so now we have their attention, all right? We've already introduced who we are, and we're getting direct to it, guys, all right? We've stated who we are, what the company is, we verified that they are the correct person, now we're gonna get into it, all right? So after he says, yes, I used to own that property, you're gonna say, okay, great. I'm glad that I got a hold of you. To be honest, I've been doing a lot of research trying to locate you. What my company does is we reach out to individuals who have open claims at the county. 
all right? So you are aware of the um, foreclosure that took place back in October, correct? All right, so now we've done the direct approach, all right? We're kind of getting into what we're doing, all right? We're saying that, look, our company, we do research. But before we present that, just so we don't seem like, all right, this person's like kill, 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 kill on the close, we're kind of getting them to ease up, saying, look, I'm glad that I got a hold of you. I've been doing a lot of research. Uh, you have an open claim, all right? You have an open claim over at the county, okay? That property was foreclosed back in October. Whenever the property was foreclosed, you can refer to that date, all right? You can ask them if they're aware of it. Most likely they're gonna say yes, all right? At that point, now we are gonna start asking them engaging questions, all right? And it's very important to ask engaging questions, guys, because on these cold calls, we have no idea what they're doing throughout their day. They can be cutting their grass, they could have had a horrible day. We don't know what's going on, all right? So we wanna ask engaging questions to make sure that they are locked in and they're understanding what we are telling them, okay? So, you know, it was foreclosed back in October. Were you aware of this? They're most likely gonna say, yeah, you know, I lost the property, I didn't pay my taxes. Now we are getting very specific and detailed with information, guys. Yeah, you know, actually I can see here that the property was foreclosed because you didn't pay $6,854 in taxes. Now that property actually sold for a higher amount. Has anybody contacted you about the remaining funds? All right, you can say remaining funds or surplus funds, excess proceeds, overages, whatever you wanna tell them, it's all gonna to refer to the same thing. Now we're gonna say that. All right, another engaging question. They're gonna be like, wait, what? There's money left over? Or they're gonna say, yeah, these people keep calling me, but it seems like a scam, it's too good to be true, all right? Because when we're in sales, we have to present what we're doing that there's an issue and we can solve it, all right? The issue is that there's an open claim, you haven't filed it yet, and we can solve that, we can help you file the claim, all right? So at that point, we're asking them if, if anybody has contacted them, if they're aware of the surplus, they're either gonna say yes or no. Let's say, for example, they say, no, I had no idea about this. Okay, great. Well, what I'd like to do is, I want to send you over some information about this, all right? Because most people know what happens at the foreclosure. You lost your property, but they don't know what happens afterwards, all right? In my company, we're in the business of assisting people, and basically, you have funds that are left over, and we can help you file this claim. Now, we do have to act in a timely manner, so I would like to send you over these details right now. What's the best email address to send to, all right? Very specific and important to stress that we need your email right now, sir. All right, we're gonna send you over this information, okay? The information, after he gives you the email, or she, you're now gonna say, okay, great, thank you. I am going to send you over the proof that you have these funds that are available. I'm also gonna send you over the state statute, all right? The state statute is gonna explain that the previous owners are entitled to these funds, but most importantly, I'm gonna give you information about myself and my company so that you can review, all right? Once you receive those documents, I will be following up with you ASAP. And the reason why we have to act in a timely manner is because the county has a very limited time in which we can claim these funds, all right? You might be wondering why the county didn't reach out to you. I'll be honest, they did try to reach out to you, but they don't really have a motive to ensure that you have received the notification and that you are gonna file this claim, all right? So it was great getting a hold of you, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and send these documents and I'll follow up with you shortly, all right? We don't wanna tell them, look, I'm gonna follow up with you in a few days or you know, I'm gonna give you time to review. Just give me a call when you get a chance. We are very direct, guys. This is a direct approach. We wanna be getting that email because like I said, we want our proof to do the talking, okay? On your initial call, you're not trying to close somebody. You don't have to be saying, oh, we don't charge upfront fees. I can get it done for 20%. Can you go ahead and sign now? We're just trying to present who we are, what we can do, how we can help, and then let me get that email address. If you guys can get a mailing address, you're gonna have a higher conversion rate because you're gonna send over the documents and then you're gonna have a return slip and get that back. So that's very efficient, guys. So we're looking for either an email or mailing address to get to the next steps, all right? Because after we send proof, now we have something that we can actually ride on. Now they see, okay, these are the auction results or this is my name on the excess funds list or possibly this is just um, some information about the foreclosure that shows that it um, resulted in an overage. And then most importantly, we're sending in the state statute so that they understand that this is not a scam. 
You guys want to have your website together also. Make sure your website has your bio, okay? A bio, nice picture of yourself, nice and professional. And the reason is, guys, if somebody is trying to run a scam, they are not going to re reveal who they are, all right? So when you have a picture of yourself, a nice little bio description about yourself, who you are and what you do, now they can match a face with the voice, all right? So that's the direct approach. That is number one, all right? Uh, very efficient. This could be for you, but like I explained, guys, there's going to be three different ways that you can actually call. And I want you guys to pick the one that best suits your personality. Maybe you're somebody who's not direct. Maybe you're not somebody who can actually have that killer clothes mentality. So that may not be for you. All right. If you are, then go for it. Attack it. High volume sales. You're a killer. ABC always be closing. Go ahead and get it done. All right. Strategy number two, guys, this is going to be the method that I actually like to use and that I teach a lot of my employees to use. This is what I like to call as the most efficient strategy. All right. We are going to ask them how their day is, but then we're going to get direct. All right. So at the beginning, pretty much same kind of call flow. Introduce yourself. Hi, is this John? Hey, John, how you doing? My name is Eric with Prestige Family Assets Group. I don't want to take too much of your time. Were you the previous owner at 1234 Main Street? They're going to say yes. Okay, great. Were you aware of the foreclosure that took place back in October last year? Yeah, I lost the property. I didn't pay my taxes. Okay, I understand that. Has anybody reached out to you about the surplus funds? No. What are surplus funds? Well, to keep it simple, John, surplus funds are the remaining profit. I see here that your property actually sold for a higher amount. So there's a remaining profit at the county level. And it's very strange that nobody reached out to you, but I'm actually glad that that happened because my company, we can assist you. See, over at whatever your company's name is, we assist people on filing these claims and we work directly with the county, all right? Now, I don't wanna give you too much information on the phone right now. I'd like for you to review this information for yourself. What's the best email address to send to, all right? As you guys see, I am trying to get to that email as fast as possible, okay? Like I said, on that first call, we're not trying to close, get them to sign, anything like that. We're gonna get their email, all right? After they get their email, once again, same kind of flow, all right? I'm gonna send you over details regarding the foreclosure. I'm gonna send you over the state statute. You're gonna have some information about my company. And then also, we are gonna send over a DocuSign for the agreement form so we can get this ball rolling, all right? At that point, you guys are golden. You know we have to follow up. Ideally, all right, once you send that email, you should be following up within 10 minutes, all right? An immediate text saying, hey, just shot you over the email. I'm going to be calling you in a few minutes to review it and go over any questions. This is very, very efficient strategy because once they see that and they have that DocuSign, now they can go ahead and get this ball rolling. Now we can go ahead and get started because we have an agreement. All right. Now, keep in mind, guys, agreement forms typically can be DocuSign, but obviously not the county um, documents that we need notarized. So once we get that agreement signed, will be good, all right? So that second strategy is very efficient, might be for you. Now this third strategy, all right? If you've been watching this entire time, this is great for you because this third strategy is a mysterious strategy, all right guys? And there's a lot of other instructors who kind of push this strategy. I personally don't use it, but if it fits your personality, it might be great for you, all right? Because this strategy can actually get you a lot of signed agreement forms. Now, with this strategy, you will get a lot of rebuttals and a lot of skepticism, but it is something that you can get a lot of people under contract, all right? And the reason why I'm saying that this is a mysterious way because we're not gonna reveal a lot of details, all right? We're not going to tell them what they owed in taxes, how much they're owed, anything like that. We are gonna be very mysterious. This is how you do it, all right? So we're gonna call them, same thing in the beginning. Hello, is this John? John is gonna say yes. Hi, John, my name is Eric. I work with Asset Recovery Firm. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, what's going on? Look, John, there was a property over at 1234 Main Street and it shows that you were the previous owner. Is this correct? I'm gonna say, yes, I used to own that. Okay, great, I'm glad that I got a hold of you. My company, we actually work on claims and it seems to be an open claim at the county for this property. All right, has anybody contacted you about any claims after that foreclosure? No, nobody contacted us. All right, John, well, 
potentially there could be a substantial dollar amount that we can go after. So my company, we uh, perform an audit on the county's level. We see everybody who's entitled some funds after a foreclosure and your name showed up. Now, I don't know the specifics. I don't know exactly how much you're owed. Um, I will have to do some deeper digging but before I get started into that, I, you know, I wanted to reach out. It actually did take me some time to locate you. Um, so I did do some legwork there, but I want to take a, a deeper dive. All right, because you know, you're going to be entitled to some funds, but I do need to look into this. I need my team to look into this. And before we do that, before I put all of my horses to work, I want to just make sure that it's okay with you for me to proceed. All right. Now, at that point, this is why I said they might have skepticism. Well, what are you talking about? How much is it? Yada, yada, yada. What you can do is to keep closing them is, look, I'll be honest with you. All right. I've been doing this for some years now. Even if you haven't been doing it for years, you can tell them you have experience with this. You work directly with the county. And what you noticed is there is going to be a dollar amount, but there could be potential liens and other interested parties who can actually claim those. All right, now I do see that you are the previous owner and you are legally entitled, but I wanna just make sure that either you're gonna get all of this, half of this, whatever amount you can get, I wanna make sure that it's okay with you for me to go ahead and take a deeper look because I would hate to do all of this research, all of this time, and you're not even okay with me helping you recover these funds, all right? So this is very mysterious. We're stressing our value and that we can help them. And you're gonna say, look, what's an email address? I'm gonna send you over a DocuSign. This is an agreement form just so that we can get the ball rolling. After you sign that, I'm gonna have my team go after this full speed, all right? So we know exactly where to research. We're gonna go in, we're gonna verify the surplus amount. I'm gonna present that to you. Once everything looks good, then we can go ahead and negotiate everything and we can get this down for you. How does that sound? All right, so the mysterious approach is pretty good, guys, because you're gonna get a lot of signed agreement forms. All right, you send over that DocuSign, they're gonna sign it, you're gonna do your research, you're gonna verify the funds, and you're gonna close, but you're gonna have a high rise of skepticism because you are not revealing all of that information. You're not being very detailed, telling them exactly how much they owed in taxes, how much the property sold for, all right? So regardless of which strategy you guys choose, there's three things that we need to be successful in this business. We have to be professional, we have to be knowledgeable, and we have to be experts. As you guys know, I always stress this and I teach this in my course, all right? To be professional, that's gonna be the way that you communicate, the way that you sound we're not too high we're not too low we don't sound like a scam knowledgeable all right we're knowledgeable on surplus funds can you accurately explain to somebody how they are entitled to these funds with it making sense we're not going to say hey you're owed a hundred thousand dollars we're going to say look your property was foreclosed due to non-payment of taxes or mortgage the opening bid was eight thousand the property sold for twenty thousand all right so there's going to be a surplus amount of twelve thousand that makes sense all right and then an expert you just you're an expert in this field you know how to assist um, individuals who have multiple parties on that deed all right let's say it's a husband and wife you know how to deal with that scenario you know how to help a company you know how to help a deceased individual you might even know how to help a lien holder all right so that's how you become an expert all right so guys make sure you guys go ahead and choose the best one for your personality you can give all of these a try all right so I've already given you guys a, a little bit of mock call try them all out you're gonna see which one gets you the best results but always keep those three things professional knowledgeable expert and you'll be able to close deals look if you guys want to learn step by step exactly how to operate this business get the documents that you need to close deals make sure you get the course use the code take action you'll receive $100 off guys that's take action with no spaces. I'm looking forward to helping you out. Thank you.